All right, it's going to give a quick demonstration of the go tool pprof. Uh, so we have this set up inside of our runner tools. I've added two new things to it, the set block, block profile rate, as well as the set mutex profile fraction, uh, which will help us look at contention inside of uh, browser as it runs. So here to enable, you just do the dash dash profile and then it should start up the server. So it's going to run and hopefully log into the site. And once it's once it starts, you can pretty much just load into your browser, uh, this debug pprof on this uh, local host on 6060. So you'll see a number of kind of like things, links that you can view stuff at. Uh, the first one, we're just going to go in order here. Um, the first one is Alex or allocations. So you're presented with all the allocations that are currently during this snapshot uh, of this uh, process. Um, so it will change over time if you like. So you can see this. Uh, if you refresh this, you're going to see new values coming in. So you'll see a bunch of numbers here, and I honestly didn't know even what these were. I usually don't use uh, pprof for the, uh, the live one for this. I usually look at go routines and see if things are blocking or waiting. Uh, what this means is something that I've kind of basically recorded. So I always have this, so I never have to remember this anymore. Uh, so you'll see in the first part the, the number, which is the number of in-use objects, and then you'll have the bytes. And then you'll have the number of allocated objects and then the bytes of that. And then this is just the profile rate. And then you'll have the profiles below. So you can see that there's multiple different profiles that are being done here. Um, and then with the addresses, these are just the stack addresses. You'll see like this is CE5 and that's CE4. This is CC2 and CC1 is just the areas or the location of the code that's uh, uh, calling the allocations. So that's Alex. Uh, let's look at blocks. Looks like we don't have anything right now. We're gonna to have to let that run for a bit, most likely. Um, so we will go back. Actually, I'll just show it from here. Um, oh, this is in a different order. Where's blocks? Okay, blocks. So it gives you a cycles and seconds, and then it gives you a very large number and then another number. And what this basically turns out to be, this is the runtime cycles per second for the CPU. Um, and this is the cycles blocked, I think. Uh, this is the count of blocking events. So you can get these numbers. You can see where things code is being blocked uh, more often than other places. Um, looks like it's, it still doesn't really have anything going, in, going on in there. Uh, command line, pretty straightforward. Just the command line that was used to uh, execute the process. Uh, go routines. This is usually where I look first if I'm noticing any sorts of problems. Uh, if you have any sort of go routine leak, it shows up here pretty quickly. You can see here that we have for this current process, we have a total of 60 Go routines that are running. You can kind of go through. Um, you'll see a number to the left. The first one, this is the number of Go routines that respond at these addresses. Um, so we can have, we have six here, which is really coming probably from here. Um, although, no, nope, those might be different. Uh, yeah, those are different. But yeah, this is pretty, this is very useful information. If you start to see large numbers here, you probably have a go routine, like things are just not closing down properly. And what that usually ends up meaning is that you have a memory leak because if the go routine is not closed down, that means the GC, the garbage collector cannot uh, uh, clean out values that it needs. So yeah, you're most likely you're gonna spend your time there. Heap is a really another good place to look at. Uh, this is very similar to the Alex one where you just have the number of uh, allocations and then the bytes um, and then the yeah, number of in-use objects, et cetera. Um, and again, you can reference this uh, value for it. You know, so in-use bytes, allocated objects, allocated bytes, et cetera. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward stuff once you can kind of grok what these values are, because I honestly had no idea what it was until I looked it up. And to look them up, I actually looked directly at the source, which is part of this link that I'll hand out. Um, you can actually see where it's calling these values from and what it's getting them from. So you can see like in use hours, in use bytes, et cetera. So hopefully that'll help you uh, looking at that information. Uh, let's see, do we still not have any, still no mutex stuff? Um, how about block? Still no block? Weird, no blocks. I think I might have changed something. Maybe I set the rate too high or something. Anyways, profiling, which happens when you click on this, is it's going to take a, I think by default, 10 seconds or 30 second profile of the CPU, not memory. Uh, memory profiles are done differently. 
Uh, I usually use the just inside of the code, I'll set the uh, memory profiles, but you'll see it kind of running for a while. And then eventually it'll, it'll spit out a file for you to download, which I'll show in a second here. Um, once that finishes, I can look at the other ones. Actually, I just click over here. Okay, so profile finished. Um, this is just, again, all the GoRoutines stack trace, which is really helpful if you're looking for deadlocks in particular. Uh, you'll see a GoRoutine and the, the ID of the GoRoutine, what kind of spawned that GoRoutine, the stack trace for that. And then you'll see how long the channel or the GoRoutine has been waiting. This is really, really important for channels. So if you have like a select statement here that's been like waiting for 30 minutes and your process isn't working anymore, it's a good chance you have something that's blocked either reading or writing. Um, so it's really helpful to, to get a good understanding of uh, what GoRoutines are waiting for and how long they're waiting and what's the expected time that they should be waiting. So yeah, we have lots of uh, managed guys. This was really small this entire time. Anyways, so that's the GoRoutine stuff. Now, the only other thread create, we don't really care too much about. I've never really used that before. Um, tracing, this does a trace debug, which, uh, yeah, it's just execution. Again, you can just go to a trace for that, but I usually don't do that, to be honest. I usually just look at the profiler. So I think we have enough information at this point to use the go tool pprof, which we're going to switch to here and make this a little bigger. Um, so for the go tool, we'll show that one later. Uh, let's just look at this first. So we've just, no, it's the old profile. profile one. So we want to look at this one. Anyway, so when inside of the uh, pprof tool, you use help, you can get a bunch of little helpful information for you. What I usually end up doing if I'm seeing like high CPU usage or something is I'll do top 10, and it's usually done by cumulative, I think. Yep, cumulative. You can see down here and make this bigger again. So you see that it gives the information. Uh, what's helpful, obviously, is runtime information. We probably, unless you have serious issues you really don't care about that so you can actually just ignore one time so you can see that most of our time was spent in buff io reader bytes and string to lower as well as reading from sockets which again kind of expected um, another really cool uh aspect of pprop is you can do this list so you can say like okay let's what is the list really doing if you list it's smart enough to know that it's part of the gcd v2 and then it gives you kind of the breakdown of where the time is spent. Um, so we can do that again for like string stealer is probably not going to be too interesting. But, uh, read write. Well, kind of gives a lot more information because it actually it's, it does a regex match, so it's actually pulling out anything from the crawler. So that's nice. But there's also another tool called if you just run web, it will pop up. In Chromium, a very nice view of your call graph and where time was spent. Um, so you can see it started in browser process entries. And the redder it is, the kind of more time was spent there, and the, the lighter color than the less time it was spent. Um, the lines also have meaning, like how much uh, I think resources or something was uh, used for that. Like the lighter ones, are like less resources for users. I don't know. You can either visit this link or check out the, uh, the link in the pprof for, for more information. So you can see for us, most of our time was spent, uh, a little bit was spent in general struct decoder. This is coming from uh, the, G the way that uh, we do the JSON kind of stuff. Um, we use a special JSON iterator library that is a lot of the time is spent because DevTools uses uh, JSON back and forth. That's where we're gonna be spending a lot of our time doing a reflection of uh, JSON strings to those structs and whatnot. Other places that uh, are spent kind of runtime stuff. Again, that's not too serious for us unless we're like doing some crazy allocation stuff, but doesn't look too bad. Overall, nothing kind of surprising from here. Uh, but yeah, this is a, just a simple view. There's another view which you can do, or I think it is, is it called the list? Oh, yes. No, web list. Web. Web list. 
requires an argument. Uh, let's do oh, what's a focus? Uh, let's focus on. So here's another view that kind of gives all of the browser path information. And you can see where all the time was spent. Unfortunately, I don't think this or, uh, uh, organizes it or sorry, sorts it by time spent. So you just kind of have to go through it. I don't know if there's a way to do that, um, but it gives you all the, the time spent in the, the snapshot that was taken. And again, remember this is a snapshot. So if you have, if it's, if browser is focusing on one thing at one time, it may look completely different if you take another snapshot. If you really want a good one, you could probably do like a, a 20 minute snapshot, which you could do by passing into the, is it uh, profile? The get parameter, you can, you can pass it a duration in seconds. You can do like get, uh, where's it, profile? Just copy. You can just do like like intersect. It'll give you more time. So that's how that works. Um, and finally, the one I really want to show is the Go tool with uh, this one, pprof profile with the HTTP port. So it's a little bit different than the other one I just showed, but it also launches in the browser. And this uh, gives you, again, the, the CPU graph, as well as the zoom in here. So again, same information that we saw before. That was just an image, SVG. Now we can do uh, flame graphs. Um, not only can we do frame, flame graphs, excuse me, we can also filter. So if we wanted to look at just the flame graphs or the crawler, we can all get out information here. Again, then you can do the top uh, cumulative runs. Um, you can do different types. So you can look at the source, which again, it's, it's kind of that list of you that I was showing earlier. So this is probably where, where you want to look, um, unless you just want to get some quick stats with the uh, command line. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what I wanted to show for pprof. And I will, again, send this link uh, to help you go through those values. Because again, I had no idea what they were until basically today. Hope this helps.